Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. But after a while, the wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the, wind of the, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Now go to Zarephath, where belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that, as she, so that she as well as her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this afternoon is Psalm 4. We will pray together the entirety of Psalm 4, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 587. Psalm 4 on page 587. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You, you set, set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when rain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I love weekday Mass so much for so many reasons, including the fact that, especially in the Lady Chapel here, it, it, really feels, it really feels like a family in a lot of ways. I see many of you here day after day very faithfully, some of you on the days of the week when your schedule allows, and I know that some of you are watching online, and I know you are faithfully with us as well, and um, that is also a special family of our daily Mass community here. And I also love it because for purely self-indulgent reasons, I sort of get to pick out my very favorite things and talk about them. Um, so today you'll hear about a convent story and St. Augustine, um, <laughs> which I'm very sorry. I don't deploy these on the masses on Sundays, but I sort of feel like I can steal a little bit of your indulgence on weekday masses. Um, I think, as a lot of you know, as many of you know, I, um, I spent a lot of time in a convent in my early 20s um, because I thought I was going to be a nun forever. And I was a very good nun. And I don't think I'll ever be as good at anything else as I was at being a nun. Uh, but God is very creative, and so here I am. Um, but I think very affectionately of my time in the Abbey because I was nourished by so much of the spirituality of that community, and I was surrounded by wisdom, and I was allowed to just be in love with Jesus. And I'll never forget that, and I think it's something that has marked every other aspect of my ministry to this very day. Uh, but one of the things I'm thinking about today, selfishly again, but here we are, <laughs> is that Psalm 4, the psalm that we pray together today, is I think the first psalm that I ever memorized. And there aren't very many that I've memorized. I'm not that holy. I'd like to be there. But Psalm 4 I memorized because in the Abbey, we pray every office of the day. We pray eight offices in total. And the psalms rotated at every office, as they do in our offices of morning and evening prayer here at St. Mark's. But Compline was the only office of the day that didn't change very much. Compline, of course, is night prayer, prayed just before bed, which embarrassingly in the Abbey is about 7.30 p.m. <laughs> but if you're waking up at 3.20 in the morning, that's sort of where you have to be. Um, but in the winter, it's dark in the Northeast at 7.30. And so it was helpful because we didn't use the books. And so you, you know, week by week, just came to know the prayers of Compline by heart, including Psalm 4, which was on frequent rotation almost every day, if not every day in certain seasons. And so I memorized Psalm 4, and it was a great source of nourishment to me because there were so many questions that were on my heart at that point, and my vocation, as I understood it then, was to pray deeply and profoundly for a world that suffers. And I still consider that part of my vocation, as it is a part of yours as a Christian. And it can be overwhelming, can't it, to just think about all of the ways people suffer, all of the ways we suffer, all of the ways we question God's providence, God's wisdom, thinking about gun violence, thinking about illness, thinking about aging, thinking about our family members who, who bring us causes for concern at different seasons of our lives, and Psalm 4 just speaks to all of this and invites us to place our trust irrevocably in God at all times. And it's appropriate for the evening office of Compline, too, because, of course, we have that beautiful line at the very end, well, there's verse 4, that says, Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Verse 8, I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now, I can't speak to everyone's experience, but 
in my own, nighttime is the worrying time sometimes. Because the days get busy. And then it's the nighttime, and you're laying down, perhaps in a very peaceful place, maybe next to someone you love very much, and you think, well, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be, and yet turning off that rigmarole of all of the things that we worry about, closing those places of, of, of fear and anxiety within us is very difficult. And so it's helpful to think of this. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. I prayed this often before sleeping at the Abbey, and I pray it often now, because I'm reminded of the words of St. Augustine in his Confessions, where he says, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And the older I get, the more profound this simple proclamation becomes to me, because I think of all the places I try to rest that are not God. I think of trying to master my own self, master my fears, master my anxieties, improve certain skill sets, the things I try to present for other people. And I know this is all of us, but I'll speak to you just as a person. I do this myself. The ways that we try to make things better, because we think that when we can depend on ourselves, when we can depend on our skill, when we can depend on our reputation, our intellect, whatever it is that we might find ourselves trying to rely on, we think that will bring us peace. Maybe it will, for certain seasons. Perhaps there's a season of our life where we try to find peace in our financial security. We try to find peace and peace in our own accomplishments. We try to find peace in our families, maybe even these very good things that may be contributors to a more profound sense of peace. None of them, none of them will be complete without first resting in Christ. It's just the simple truth of a life, that it is the work of a life to try to believe. Because it's difficult to believe this, even when intellectually we know it, we recognize it, we think, that makes sense, I'd like to do this. No matter how faithful we are, it becomes this truth that we must pray to be reminded of. And the good news is that Christ will remind us. St. Augustine reminds us, of course, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. But God will remind us when we turn to him, when we ask, when we plant our roots in him, in the gospel. That is the font, right? There's that image that you can't give anyone else a cup of water to drink unless your own will has been refreshed. This is the well. God is the well. Christ is the well. The gospel is the well. Whether or not we remember this at all times, whether or not we believe it at all times, it is just what is true. And it is no act of embarrassment to ask God to be reminded, to bring ourselves back to the edge of that water, and to ask God to teach us like a child how to drink. We all have to do this, priests especially, God help us, we have to do this. Because it's when we start to run out of that water, that sense of stability and rootedness in the Christ we meet in the Gospels. That's when we run into trouble. That's when we rely on other things. It's when we rely on other people, or even ourselves. And that risks idolatry. It risks selfishness. It brings us to places of fear that are completely unnecessary. When we remember that it is God who helps us lie down in peace. I'm encouraged by this line from the psalm as well. Many are saying, oh, that we may see better times. God isn't that us. I don't know if it's encouraging or depressing to know that thousands of years ago they were asking the very same thing. Oh, that we might see better times. Yes, let that be our prayer. But recognize that it is only God who can speak to its answer. It is only God who can speak into that vacancy, that void that's within us. And that's where things grow. And that's how we rest in peace. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people this afternoon take the form of Form 6 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will pray together responsibly, beginning on page 392. 
In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, and for Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests, we worship and pray in this place. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Especially today, praying for all of those who have entrusted themselves to our prayers in this place. Especially Chris, Sue, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Judith, Nick, Russell, Wes, John, Joan, Marilyn, Lorraine, Teresa, Will, Bryce, Audrey, Joanne, Alex, Rodney, Lily, Diana, Daniel, Eric, Joshua, Howard, Jeff, Margaret, and Martha, and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially today giving thanks for the beauty of this day, the beginning of the summer season. We give you thanks for the conclusion of our children's formation program, giving thanks especially for all of our volunteers who have helped nourish and enrich our children in this parish. We give thanks for the parish picnic this upcoming weekend, and for all of the opportunities to encounter the Lord present to us this coming summer. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of violence, fear, warfare, or oppression, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left unknown, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May, may the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and that of all this holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Mark the Evangelist and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our path, Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, working within you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.